Okay, everyone, unit number five, government interventions at macroeconomic level. And this is chapter number 23, and monetary policy is the name of the chapter. So in this video, first of all, we will define what monetary policy is. And then we will look into the graphical representation of the monetary policy because it is a demand side policy. If government uses, like central bank uses expansionary monetary policy, then what will happen to the aggregate demand in the economy, economic growth, real GDP, and definitely price level and employment as well. And then we will look into the contractionary policy and its graphical representation as well. So monetary policy is defined as the policy of central bank of the country central bank is the main bank of every country like for pakistan it is state bank of pakistan and in the usa federal reserve bank is the central bank of the usa bank of england is the bank of central bank of the uk so central bank uh, monetary policy is made by the central bank and this policy like manipulates money supply it manipulates interest rate and interest rate and it also like manipulates or changes credit regulations credit regulations and exchange rate of currency exchange rate of currency so since exchange rate that is basically manipulated by central bank is not the part of syllabus right now as per the recent syllabus so our main focus will be on money supply interest rate and credit regulation instead of like exchange rate i, I i'll explain you exchange rate as well but our focus will be on other tools of the monetary policy Okay, so by defining monetary policy, we can say that it is the policy of central bank of the country that manipulates money supply, interest rate and credit regulations to achieve multiple macroeconomic objectives by changing aggregate demand in the country. Okay, so how does monetary policy affect aggregate demand and achieve multiple macroeconomic objectives? Uh, to explain that we have to split this monetary policy into further two types one is called expansionary monetary policy and the other one is called contractionary monetary policy so what is expansionary monetary policy expansionary as the name suggests is the policy that is used to expand the economic activity in the country right so this policy is also known as inflationary policy right it is known as inflationary because it causes inflation, demand pull inflation in the country. On the other hand, contractionary monetary policy is used to decrease aggregate demand in the country. And this policy is also known as deflationary uh, monetary policy. So deflationary monetary policy because it causes deflation or fall in the price level in the country. Okay, so now moving to the expansionary uh, monetary policy and looking at uh, each uh, element or each tool of the monetary policy. First of all, if central bank of the country wants to increase or expand economic activity in the country and e increase aggregate demand in the country, then it will increase money supply. Right, so when money supply increases, people have more funds with them for spending and investing. So as we know that aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M definitely. So if government like increases money supply, consumers will consume more, investors will invest more. So as a result, aggregate demand, overall aggregate demand will increase. So when aggregate demand increases, it causes economic growth, but it causes inflation as well. I'll make the graph at the end as well. So looking at the second tool or instrument of the supply uh, of the monetary policy, that is decrease in interest rate. Keep in mind when interest rate is low, like savings will fall because people think that keeping money with the bank account 
is not that like worthy because they are getting lesser reward because of low interest so they will not save or save less but they will consume more right and they will also invest more for example if you have more money then say if central bank offers low interest rate then instead of keeping it with the bank account you may invest it into any business and similarly when interest rate is low more people get loans as a consumer they spend more and as an as an investor they invest more so again it causes increase in aggregate demand in the economy and easier credit regulations also increases economic activity in the country credit regulations basically refer to the process of advancing loans right so when like regulations are easier it means getting loans from the financial institutions is really low uh, it really easier right so it requires less documentation less procedures to get loans from the financial institutions so more people will get loan for spending as well as investing money into the business decrease in exchange rate of currency is another like element of uh, expansionary monetary policy when exchange rate is low price of exports will fall price of exports will fall when price of export falls demand will rise quantity demand for exports will rise and total revenue from exports will also increase and when the value of currency is low depreciated then price of imports increases so when import price is high people will less uh, demand lesser imports so as a result total expenditure on imports will fall when total revenue from exports is higher total expenditure on imports is low so it will lead to favorable balance of payment position so balance of payment uh, will move to the positive area so again looking at the aggregate demand that is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m x minus m represents balance of payment current account position and c is consumption i is investment g is government spending x is export and m is import so when balance of payment moves to surplus then this part will increase definitely and aggregate demand will also increase so it is basic rule of the math if right hand side increases left hand side will also increase so now we can look into the diagram diagram of like expansionary monetary policy when there is expansionary monetary policy it increases aggregate demand in the country so we have origin point we have real gdp on x this is real gdp on x and on y axis we have price level or we can also write average price level as well but we cannot write just price because when we write just price that shows price of a certain product but here in macroeconomics we consider average prices of everything that we are basically trading in the country okay so equilibrium is at e where price level is p real gdp is y so if there is rise in aggregate demand because of, because of expansionary monetary policy then aggregate demand shifts to the right so equilibrium moves to point e1 where real gdp will rise to y1 and price level will increase to p1 so price level has increased when price level increases because of higher aggregate demand it is called demand pull inflation so price level increases demand pull inflation is caused but real gdp is also increasing so it will cause economic growth in the country so growth will rise and when aggregate demand is increasing investment will be rising and as a result more employment opportunities will be created so all three objectives of the government are achieved here uh two objectives are achieved but third objective of inflation is deteriorated rather inflation rate has increased instead of decreasing now moving to uh, the second policy contractionary monetary policy when central bank uses contractionary monetary policy it is also known as deflationary policy because it causes decrease in aggregate demand and decrease in demand pull inflation so central bank decreases money supply when money supply is low in the country consumers will have less money for spending investors will have less money for investment so as a result overall aggregate demand will increase as we have already discussed that aggregate demand is the sum of consumption plus investment 
plus government expenditure and plus expo exports minus imports so you can add exports minus imports here as well okay so interest rate is uh, higher when interest rate is higher people will so save more money so when interest rate is higher saving will rise consumption will fall and investment will also fall so when investment decreases consumption decreases then aggregate demand will also decrease deferred credit regulations is another tool of monetary policy contractionary monetary policy when government makes like it difficult for the people to get loans from the financial institutions in terms of like procedure they have to follow then definitely less people will get loans and as a result consumption will fall and investment will also decrease and the last thing is increase in exchange rate of currency when exchange rate of currency appreciates or increases then it will also like uh, it will also uh, cause aggregate demand to decrease uh, because when currency appreciates price of exports will increase when price of export increases quantity demand for exports will fall because less people will be uh, willing and able to purchase from you so your exports will fall and as a result total revenue from exports will also decrease and price of imports will decrease because your currency has high value now and as a result quantity demand for imports will rise and total expenditure on imports will also rise when export earning is low import payments are high it will cause balance of payment deficit so when balance of payment moves to the deficit region then aggregate demand will fall because we know that aggregate demand is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m when x minus m area moves to the negative region and falls then aggregate demand will also fall and as a result aggregate demand curve will shift to the left so let's have uh, have a look on its graph now so if aggregate demand falls it shifts to the left so we can properly label the diagram we have real gdp on x and we have price level on y or you can write average prices as well so this is aggregate demand and this is aggregate supply keep in mind fiscal and monetary policies are demand side policies and they manipulate aggregate demand in the country so real gdp is y and price level is p so if there is decrease in aggregate demand then aggregate demand curve will shift to the left and equilibrium will move to e1 where real gdp will fall to y1 and price level will decrease to p1 so when price level decreases inflation is controlled and when real gdp decreases growth falls right so this is kind of disadvantage of this policy that it decreases growth like growth will fall growth falls but inflation is controlled on the other hand aggregate demand is decreasing so employment will also decrease so is it is again uh, the negative impact of the contractionary policy this policy is known as deflationary policy as well because it causes deflation or decrease in price level and this policy expansionary policy is known as inflationary policy because it increases price level or causes inflation in the economy okay so now moving to the effectiveness of uh, like monetary policy to achieve multiple macroeconomic objectives so this policy is not always effective because it has many problems uh, like this policy uh, takes longer time as compared to the fiscal policy fiscal policy brings immediate impacts on an economy in the short run but this uh, policy like uh, monetary policy takes one and half year to bring an impact on an economy and similarly if economy is already in recession then decrease in interest rate will not benefit the country because investors will be reluctant to invest into the new ventures so investments may not increase and employment opportunities may not may not grow and economic growth may not occur so monetary policy is not always like effective uh, it also depends upon uh, the supply side policy and uh, uh, fiscal policy as well for example if government wants to increase economic growth by decreasing interest rate but at the same time uh, fiscal policy is a contractionary policy that causes 
aggregate demand to decrease expansionary policy is trying to increase aggregate demand but at the same time uh, contractionary fiscal policy will be pushing it down so again this policy will be a failure if it is not well aligned with the fiscal policy okay so economists also suggest to use supply side policy instead of like demand side policies because supply side policies have uh, like sustainable impacts on an economy in the long run uh, instead of like short term impacts uh, that basically arise because of demand side policies mainly through fiscal policy okay so these are like uh, different tools and different ways uh, that monetary policy uses to achieve multiple macroeconomic objectives and why it might not be that much effective and so this is it see you with the next class Allah Hafiz